Now, I'm pretty sure that you've all come across a doctor who wanted to specialize in cardiothoracic surgery, radiology, but now working as a GP, emergency medical specialist, or a medical specialist. This is truly a global medical professional issue. Doctors who aspire to be in some specialty, somehow due to professional or personal issues, don't get to be in that particular specialty. And special training is not that easy, no matter which country you choose. Like all professionals reaching the top, the medicine is no different. It's like a pyramid with only committed and hardworking people getting to choose their own specialties. In medicine though, the trend seems to be always from the most favorable to the least favorable. And the trend that is from surgery to medicine to general practice. Though one could argue the hard work is perhaps the same across all of these specialties. But if you pay close attention, now very slowly the trends are shifting. The competitiveness seems to favor the specialties with better lifestyles. And hence, specialties like dermatology, anesthesia, radiology, psychiatry, and even emergency medicine seem to be in demand to some extent. But despite this gold rush, one of the questions I frequently get asked, can I get into the specialist training in Australia? And how can I become a consultant? And the next question is, how hard is it to get into specialist training in some specialties like dermatology, orthopedics, cardiology, neurosurgery, or even emergency medicine for that matter. Firstly, let me clarify. Me saying that orthopedics, dermatology, neurosurgery is hard does not factually mean anything and does not educate you in any way. I think the correct terminology here is how competitive a particular specialty is. For the sake of this video, I will break it down into following. What specialties are available in Australia? essential criteria to get into special training, desirable criteria, structure of training, postgraduate exam, time investment versus financial return of your chosen specialty, becoming a consultant here in Australia, and how to become a consultant here in Australia if you are an international medical graduate with overseas specialist training experience. And finally, I'll draw out my conclusion based on all of these factors. So what are the specialist pathways available in Australia? Although there are about 60 specialties to train, and with super specialization, there might be even close to 100, who knows? The key specialties are emergency medicine, ICU, anesthesia, medicine and allied, surgery and allied, psychiatry, radiology, dermatology and general practice. The essential criteria to get into the specialist training. You must be having a general or full registration with APRA. Uh, for Australian graduate, it means completion of an intern year. As an IMG, it means passing AMC1, passing AMC clinical or completed WBA program, plus 12 months of supervised clinical work as an RMO. Most of the colleges now require permanent residency as an essential criteria to get into training like emergency, ICU, general practice, all of the medical and surgical colleges as well. Now in Australia, getting into permanent residency is not that hard. After full registration or general registration with APRA, you can apply for permanent residency, which takes about three to six months to arrive. Number three, completed at least 12 months of resident level work. Now this is very basic, but most residents would have done two or three or even four or five years of resident level work or a junior registrar position. Number four, consultant references. Every college needs references so a consultant who can put in a word for you that this is a committed doctor and uh, we support his application now let's talk about the desirable criteria to get into specialist training where specialty competitiveness really comes out into play number one two years of unaccredited registrar in your chosen specialty in multiple hospitals in Australia. This means about 80 to 100 hours of work, clinical work that is a fortnight plus on-call commitment. And this is a very hard work because you're not really recognized into a training pathway, but you're putting on those all the hard work to get a nice structured reference, to get that nice job onto your CV to be shortlisted for a specialty training interview. Number two, overseas clinical placement. This could be in a form of paid or unpaid observerships in UK, US, or clinical work even in Australia in your chosen specialty under a very prominent service with which is a center of excellence for say colorectal cancers or working under a very prominent you know neurosurgeon who has got many publications and who can really put in a good word for you. Number three, research and publications. Now, this is where your CV really stands out. But be mindful when you're doing research, which can be a full-time work, it does not really count as a work. You must be also working in a clinical capacity. Some trainees do like to do master's degrees. That is especially true for some of the very competitive specialties like orthopedic and neurosurgery. But master's is more important when you're trying to get into a consultant level position. Number four, courses to optimize your CV, needless to say. Number six, after getting into training, some trainees do a specialist fellowship, either locally or overseas areas like electrophysiology for cardiology, pediatric neurosurgery, knee or foot fellowship in orthopedics to really stand themselves out. Number 
Number seven. So overall, to fulfill the desirable criteria, it may take about 10 to 15 years after an internship to get a consultant level job in a public health sector. So there's a lot of commitment which goes into it. Now, there is a catch due to high demand of certain specialties and a lot of private work. Some post fellowship consultants may entirely choose to stay private. And this is more valid for cardiology, orthopedics, plastic surgery and ophthalmology. Easiness or easy versus competitive specialties in Australia. If there is one suggestion I'd like to make, try plan things well in advance so you spend as little time as possible in postgraduate training. Specialties like emergency medicine, ICU, general practice are some of the most easiest specialties to get into in Australia. There are plenty of consultant level positions, especially in emergency and GPs are like having your own business. It's like a small business and after completion of training and fellowship, you can pretty much work independently, partner with a bigger practice or open up your own practice. ICU is an easy special to get into, but it is very competitive special to get a consultant level position as not every hospital have got ICU. But anesthesia by contrast is a very competitive specialty to get into, but there is a significant amount of private work. It is also one of the top earning specialties now in Australia. Similarly, it is very easy to get into physician's training, but it's very hard to get into the advanced training, which is very competitive for certain specialties like cardiology, medical oncology, gastroenterology, endocrinology. There are also very few consultant positions in public hospital in medical specialties, apart from, you know, geriatrics and acute medicine. Most cardiologists, oncologists, gastroenterologists work largely in private sector to start off with. And there's plenty of private work and their wait list could be as much as three to six months. Now, most surgical specialties are competitive, but most competitive ones are neurosurgery, cardiothoracics, orthopedics, plastics, which are the top ones, which it takes on an average of about four to five years to get into the training, followed by seven to eight years of training and passing the fellowship exam. So complete time of postgraduate surgical training could be as much as 10 to 12 years, even for the local Australian medical graduates. Other specialties like ophthalmology, urology, ENT, vascular, upper GI, colorectal are not much different either. So to give you an idea, the ratio of application to selection for surgical specialties is five applicants to one position. And the other thing is that there's only three attempts for selection interview after which you're out of the game. Pediatrics is a very well-balanced specialty, which is not very hard to get into, but again, very difficult to find a consultant level position in a public hospital. So most uh, pediatricians do work privately after completion of training. Radiology. Now this is a specialty which is very competitive special to get into. Also to find a consultant level position as a radiologist is next to impossible, but there are large private radiology services here in Australia, which tend to hire a lot of fresh consultants. It is also one of the top earning specialties here in Australia. The structure of training and exams. For most colleges, there are two phases of training. The early phase, which is called basic or provisional training, which is about two to three years. Advanced phase, which is also known as advanced training, which can be between four years to up to six to seven years, depending on the program that you've chosen. Also, unlike UK and Australia, there are no membership exams. The only way to become a consultant is to complete training of basic and advanced phases plus pass a fellowship exam. The fellowship exam is mostly done at the completion or the end of the final year of the training. Physicians are different. The fellowship exam of the Royal Australian College of Physician is done at the end of 24 months of basic physicians training and then you can apply to get into advanced training like say cardiology, respiratory, endocrinology, medical oncology. Let's understand the time investment versus financial return of a particular specialty concept. Time is money. And I like to think every bit of time spent to become a consultant is like an investment. So what is the return of your investment? Number one, for competitive specialties like cardiology, cardiothoracic surgery, neurosurgery, the longer you invest in training, the better return in terms of financial gains in the form of private work, locums. For orthopedics, neurosurgery, ophthalmology, dermatology, anesthesia, and as I said, cardiology, an average pre-tax income can be up to a million dollars per year. For less competitive specialties like general practice, emergency medicine, ICU, the income is linked directly to the amount of work you do. The more you work, the more you earn. And there are limitations to human endurance. So even if you maximize your work, to increase your earning, there's a real risk of burnout. There are GPs working remotely and emergency medicine consultant working more than full times as locums in regional setting or rural setting who are earning close to about $800,000 to up to a million dollars per annum. But realistically, most average emergency physician who are working in a public sector 
uh, plus you know complementing their income with 20% of the locum do earn about 4 to 500 thousand dollars per year not bad for an emergency physician would also like to think every time you spend working versus time earned for example if you're earning 1 million dollar per year that would mean at least 90 to 100 hours a week even as a specialist especially when you're building your private practice with possibly less than four weeks of annual leave so time spent is 11 months of hard work versus one month of time earned to spend in holidays so you may have three to four hundred thousand dollars of disposable income at the end of every year but only a month to enjoy and trust me even in that month, you will be working in some sort of capacity. Compare that with an average emergency medicine consultant who works 40 hours per week in a public hospital plus two locums uh, per month, which will easily maximize the income to about $450,000 per year. He or she will have five weeks of paid annual week, 10 days of conference leave, so the disposable income may only be $150,000, but the time earned is two months every year, which is completely free of distractions in terms of your work. That can be same for any surgical specialty as well, as some of the friends that I know choose to work and protect their downtime with the family, and that is called quality of life. Working as a consultant, public versus private practice. The public setup work for a consultant is a combination of clinical teaching and supervision of administrative work. Private work is all clinical. In Australia, most specialists can work complete private, complete public, or have a component of private, component of public. There are specialties which are predominantly private, for example, orthopedics, cardiology, gynecology, dermatology, and many of these specialists tend to stay private only, especially if they're young ones, and they have not been able to find a public job yet. But then some consultants choose to stay public only. They develop their own preference, for administrative work, teaching work, and clinical work. And this is also rewarded on top of your normal salary in form of additional bonuses. For example, a director of emergency may get twenty-five to $30,000 on top of their base salary to be a director of emergency medicine. Now, becoming a consultant as an international medical graduate. To become a consultant in Australia, there are a specialist recognition pathway. That is to assess exactly two things. Number one, overseas training number two overseas fellowship exam application for overseas training and exam is assessed by individual colleges like royal australasian college of surgeons physicians emergency medicine icu anesthetics gp etc now there are three types of img which i've come across in this category firstly doctors from us uk canada and ireland who have completed full training have got certificate of completion of specialist training or ccst and have at least worked for two years as consultant in those countries like UK, US, Ireland, Canada. They can mostly have their full training and exam recognized and after a brief period of observation of about six to 12 months as a senior registrar can work independently as consultant. It is because the training and the fellowship exam of these countries are exactly similar to the Australian postgraduate clinical and training exams. Secondly, the doctors from subcontinent like Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and some Middle Eastern countries like Egypt. There are proper training programs in these countries like FCPS, specialty boards and MD programs. They can have their training and exams reviewed as in a form of initial application and be invited for an interview. The specialist college will conduct an interview and basically again they will assess two main things. Number one, how similar doctors postgraduate training is to the special training and postgraduate exams here in Australia. Based on the application and interview, they will be given either a partially comparable or fully comparable status. Most doctors in my experience get partially recognized or partially comparable status to clinical training, but they do have to take fellowship exams and also some longer period of training here in Australia. But then again, it is shorter compared to the whole lengthy training program. Third, there are doctors from the subcontinent and have done UK exam because UK is perhaps one of the only countries that allows postgraduate membership and fellowship exam based on their own overseas or back home clinic experience in India, Pakistan, Middle East. So these doctors have some training in their home countries, some in the UK, some in Middle East, and they have combination of exams like FRCS, FRCP, but the point remains the same. They must be working as a consultant for minimum of two years at the time of application of specialist recognition in Australia. And they also have to apply for training 
an exam recognition in Australia. And again, they will get either a partial or full recognition. Now, let me make a very important point. The doctors with UK membership exam like MRCP, MRCS, MRCEM, MRCP Psych, MRCP Pediatrics or whatever the membership exam are not recognized as specialists in Australia, nor do they get automatic registration to work even as a resident here in Australia. It's because membership exams may be done solely and completely based on overseas clinical experience in Middle East, India, and many centers across the world for a very limited and often no training. When I completed my intercollegiate MRCS in the UK, I was only in the first year of postgraduate training. And even in the UK, MRCS, MRCEM, MRCP are not specialists, but specialist entry exams. However, due to the pandemic, most of the membership people were allowed to work as a consultants or locum consultants, but not as a substantive consultant. These doctors are in large number across the world and perhaps the most active group considering the move to Australia and frequently ask me this question of entry into the Australian medical system and the ray of hope of their exam recognition. But despite my extensive search in this area, it still shows no recognition of the UK membership exam. So my advice, if you have membership exam, please do send specialty colleges an email and maybe they may consider your application based on your credentials and proper training and give you some partial recognition and training time in Australia. I hope this video has given you some general sense of specialty training here in Australia. Despite the choice of your own chosen specialty being a lifelong commitment, we do see high rates of burnout in every specialty. And for this reason, people give up or switch specialties and very late come to realization and find work in more balanced lifestyle choices. Here I would like to leave you with three main points. Number one, exposure to focus. My first suggestion is to have as much exposure in your RMO years across the number of specialties to develop a real aptitude. Maximum of five years to get into training, be it surgery, medicine, or anything else that you fancy. Number two, switching the gear early. If the terrain is very hard and steep and you're working very hard to achieve your dreams, eventually you will burn out before you even begin your special training. It's very important to remember the shift gear and get into the specialty which is exciting, but it is not draining on your emotional and physical well-being, and that for your family as well. Money matters, I know that. The last thing is not to choose the specialties for money. There are far less exhausting ways of earning money than medicine. Plus, remember in this day and age, even a GP can still earn more than any other medical professional, provided he's smart and is committed to financial growth. And I would like to leave with you thoughts to focus more deeply into your future. Look after yourself, your career, growth, and personal bandwidth.